It can't even fly. It's misleading in its appearance, with the wings and all. But a fraud has also been perpetrated on the ostrich. So, in fairness, it should be cleared up. Contrary to belief, the ostrich doesn't bury its head in the sand to avoid unpleasant situations. Whoever came up with that owes the ostrich an apology. It's a ridiculous notion. It couldn't breathe while doing that. Though it may look like it sometimes, what it is probably doing is eating. But some of their behavior is quite bird-like. It is attracted to shiny things. It lays huge eggs, and it has wings. But it is an odd bird. But what is odd about the ostrich is what's great about the ostrich. It is indeed the biggest bird in the world, and it has large, impressive wings, and it cannot fly. What it can do is run like the wind. Of course, it looks a little silly when it runs, but this is the bird you want to put your money on in a race, because that is the fastest silly walk you'll ever see. Up to 70 kilometers an hour of silly. With only two toes, their clawed feet look like a dinosaur's. That actually helps them reach that incredible speed. But why do they need to be so fast? Sometimes they have to get away from very fast predators like lions, cheetahs, or hyenas. The ostrich's speed comes from its long, powerful legs, which can take strides of up to 4.5 meters. If they have to turn quickly, that's where the wings come into play. They will use them as rudders to help change direction. And if it gets cornered, those legs can be used as a formidable weapon. The ostrich could potentially kill a large animal with a well-placed kick, especially with that nasty claw sticking out. But mostly, they run away, and they look pretty funny doing it. But why can't they fly? Some scientists think their ancestors could. Dinosaurs were the biggest predators. One theory is that after the dinosaurs disappeared, the ancestral ostrich didn't need to fly because nothing was hunting it. And because there was an abundance of food at runway level. Ostriches turned in their pilot's license and became grazers. They turned their attention to life on the ground. But because their wings didn't just fall off, the ostrich found new uses for them including one of the oddest mating rituals in the animal kingdom. The males perform a flamboyant mating dance, using their wings heavily in their choreography. They blow up their neck like a balloon, and most turn bright red in the process. The male crouches down and kind of awkwardly gets on top of the female and sways back and forth while fluttering his feathers. It's a peculiar-looking affair, but since we still have ostriches, it must be working. Why be boring when you can be that flamboyant? And the result of that wacky dance? Giant prehistoric-looking eggs. Ostriches have the largest egg in the contemporary bird kingdom. Before that, the elephant bird, which was like a bigger version of an ostrich and went extinct around the 17th century, laid a doozy of an egg. 30 centimeters long and 20 centimeters wide. That's bigger than your head. But the ostrich egg is still something. It's 2,000 times bigger than the smallest bird egg, which belongs to the hummingbird. One ostrich egg is equal to about two dozen chicken eggs. That's 1.3 kilograms of egg. That's a big omelet. And ostrich eggs are so strong that an average-sized person can stand on top of them and they won't break. These strange birds also have some pretty unusual nesting rituals. Ostriches live in a pride of about 10 birds, and within that is a harem. There is an alpha male and a dominant female, and then other females below her. Each hen can lay between five and 10 eggs, and all the hen's eggs go into one nest, which is really just a shallow depression in the ground. But it's not one big happy family. The head female wants nothing of the other female's eggs, so she'll kick them out of the middle of the nest, leaving them on the edge where they are vulnerable to predators and unlikely to get properly incubated. 
Luckily, the ostrich can easily protect their nest too, as they don't need to get up for a drink of water very often. Ostriches are a lot like another strange looking animal, the camel. In fact, the scientific name for the ostrich is Struthio camelus, which means ostrich camel. They get a lot of water from their food and can regulate their temperature and water loss because they don't sweat. Also like camels, they have big eyes with special eyelids to protect them from sand. Some say their eyeball is bigger than their brain. But that's not nice or fair. Watching an ostrich, you might think they have a small brain. But they're actually pretty smart. And what they may lack in finesse, they more than make up for in speed and personality. That said, they still like shiny things. On the coasts of Peru and Chile lives a handsome bird with immaculate grooming habits. The Inca Tern's plumage is legendary. But under that facade is a surprisingly chivalrous and brave bird. Preferring to nest on rocky cliffs and sandy beaches along the west coast, they live in massive colonies of thousands of birds, usually living alongside Humboldt penguins. These seabirds are known for their mustache-like tufts, making them look like proper gentlemen. All that's missing is a cigarette holder and a martini. They're also very easy to spot, thanks to their impressively manicured bright red feet, making this fellow one of the most unusual looking birds in the animal kingdom. The mustache is made of long feathers underlined by a fleshy wattle. It's for more than just decoration though. Much like a buck's antlers, the mustache is for display and sexual selection. That's right, mustaches are sexy again. But unlike antlers, both male and female Inca terns have these dashing decorations above their beak. In both sexes, it's to show off that they're mature and healthy enough to mate. The bigger and longer the stash, the healthier the bird. And presumably, the healthier the chicks they can produce. Once they produce those chicks, the males and females incubate the eggs and then share parenting and fending duties. Because after all, this is a progressive bird and a gentleman never abandons his nest. Most of their nests can be found high up on cliffs on the west coast of South America, in hollows and burrows. Here, these impeccable looking birds aren't afraid to get wet. They can often be seen hovering in groups over schools of anchovies and small fish, every so often making impressive dives for their dinner. So there's more to these dashing birds than their looks. They are daring and devoted to their families. And hey, just because you've settled down doesn't mean you can't have style. The marabou stork is not the best looking bird in the world. And their eating habits live up to their appearance. They are the neighbor you want. They'll eat dead animals and have even been known to nibble on flamingos. From behind, they kind of look like an undertaker. From the front, they don't get much better. They're not old or sick or dying. This is just how they look. These strange looking birds are hard to miss. They can grow up to 1.5 meters tall. With a wingspan of over 3.6 meters, the marabou stork boasts the second largest wingspan of any living bird, with the albatross sporting the biggest. At nine kilograms, they're also one of the heaviest birds that can still fly, soaring up to 4,000 meters in the air. That's partially thanks to their hollow leg bones and toe bones, 
which cuts back on quite a bit of weight. Speaking of their gangly feet, they're supposed to be dark gray. But because of a buildup of bird poop, they tend to look mostly white from a distance. Though it may seem that hygiene is not for these birds, they defecate on their legs to cool down. This pink balloon under their bill is actually called a gular sac. When the marabou stork wants to appear threatening and dangerous to other storks, it inflates the sac. It also helps them regulate temperature because this pink inflatable sac is packed with blood vessels. With no feathers to insulate the heat, it is released, helping to keep them cool. That strange sac is practical. The naked head and neck are not the result of a bad haircut. These storks feed on dead animals, just like their cousins, the vultures. If they had a feathered head, it would just get clogged with blood and guts during dinner time. They also eat scraps and really anything they can find. Like frogs, eggs, and some say even shoes sometimes. Now that's putting a foot in your mouth. To maximize their scavenging opportunities, they tend to live near garbage dumps, fishing villages, and slaughterhouses. Not exactly hot markets for real estate and easy to find a place. When it's not scavenging dead animals or garbage, it's playing house. Collecting sticks to build a nice comfy nest to keep his partner happy. Strangely enough, marabou storks can often be found heading towards fires. Not to be heroic and help put out the fire, though. They've learned that's a very efficient way to find dead or dying animals to feast on. Now that's a hot meal. Their massive wedge-shaped bill and elastic stomach stretch to fit whatever they find. They're not picky, eating almost two pounds of food each day. As gross as they seem, the marabou stork plays an important role in the ecosystem. They are waste removal engineers, cleaning up garbage and dead animals. It's a dirty job, but someone has to do it. Just be grateful that the marabou stork volunteered to clean up the neighborhood. The marabou stork couldn't care less about appearances, but in Indian Sri Lanka lives a bird who's paying very close attention to how it looks. But this club is gentlemen only. Like the dandies of the 19th century, these suave male birds grew up cultivating their vanity. With peacocks, it's all about the show. Strutting around with crowns of blue, these flamboyant creatures have only one thing on their minds, looking good for the ladies. Peacocks have been romanticized throughout history, even by Shakespeare. They are often used to display wealth and are revered as a symbol of immortality. Technically speaking, the long-tailed birds are called peafowl, and they only have long tails for part of the year. Only males are peacocks, as females are peahens. Always looking for an opportunity to show off, they gather to munch on plants and small insects they find on the ground, always in their best attire. Males spend a lifetime putting themselves at risk with predators, flaunting a magnificent train of feathers on their back end. They're not exactly blending in, but it's not for the sake of their suits. It's for the sake of showing off to the females. But what's the point of this ostentatious display of feathers by the males? It is a legitimate attempt at charming a potential mate in a competitive world. In a grandiose performance, the peacock fans his large train of feathers across his back, creating an impressive wall of color to woo the onlooking peahen. The fan, made up of 150 feathers, is more than 60% of his total body length. The outrageous mating ritual is developed into an elaborate and technical dance. If the peacock suspects the peahen is interested, he turns around and actually shakes his booty at her. 
but there is more to this spectacle than simply showing off. Females choose their mates according to the size, color, and quality of the feathers. They're very particular. The eye spots on each feather, in particular, are essential to these courtship displays. Each feather features an iridescent eye-like pattern that is indeed eye-catching. Females, it seems, are especially fond of the blue-green patches in each eye spot. And we can only imagine how things appear to a peahen. Peafowl have refined color vision, different than humans, making the contrast in the eye markings on the peacock's feathers even more pronounced. The mating dance of the peacock is the ultimate display of sexual selection. Females choose the peacock with the most fantastic fan, because the nicer the tail, the better the genes. So getting some tail means a lot more for these birds. An impressive male can actually mate with several females who will lay three to five eggs each. Females, of course, are the more practical sex, needing to avoid predators while incubating their eggs. Peahens sport a dull looking coat in order to blend in. It's a sensible look for survival. But if peacocks fail to harness the beauty of their tails, their lineage will end with them, leaving them sad and beautiful with no one to appreciate them. Maybe then they'll go for a solo flight of remorse. Yes, believe it or not, these birds can fly. In fact, the peacock is considered one of the largest flying birds because of the reach of its tail. But don't expect to see it fly very often. Peacocks don't exactly like to tousle their feathers, just the opposite, of course. But sometimes all that primping may have truly been in vain. Most birds have small bills. But then there's the hornbill. It has a huge one. But this noble creature also has a huge soft spot for love and family. They say size doesn't matter, but no one told the hornbill. They're known for their comically large bills. They're even named for it. It's an incredible multi-purpose tool, helping them fight, clean, eat, and construct their nests. Why it's so large is a mystery. The bill is so enormous that the hornbill's first and second vertebrae are fused together to help them carry the extra weight. They're the only bird with this unique neck adaptation. They also have incredibly strong neck muscles, making the bill even bigger in some species. The impressive piece on top is called the cask. It's a hollow piece of keratin, sometimes reinforced with bone, which is there to keep the bill sturdy. On some birds, the cask alone can weigh up to 10% of their body weight. That's like balancing a three-month-old baby on your head. It's thought the cask acts like a vibrating chamber to help the hornbill's voice project through the forest. Hornbills have binocular vision, which means their forward-facing eyes' fields of view overlap in front. This helps them focus on the food items they're picking up with their bill, allowing for intense precision. But if they catch food at the tip of their beak, their tongues aren't long enough to bring it into their mouths. So they have to tip their heads back to gulp it down. That helps them eat some more dangerous meals like scorpions without getting stung because the scorpion goes down so fast. For the hornbill, romantic gestures are big too. A male will flirt with a female by bringing her food for a whole year to build trust. Trust is important when you mate for life like these lovebirds. Once they mate and the female lays eggs, she stays holed up inside a tree hollow, with the opening sealed except for a tiny hole to feed through. His job while she's in there caring for their young is to deliver them delicious food. This helps protect the chicks from predators until they're old enough to defend themselves outside of the hollow. 
the male hornbill really does get to his mate through her stomach, and in turn, she protects their brood. After all is said and done, that big bill is impressive, but it's not as impressive as their love. Devoted to each other for life, hornbills really are lovebirds. All of these bizarre-looking birds are beautifully adapted to their environments. The fast and flamboyant ostrich, the dapper and daring Inca tern, the scrappy marabou stork, the iridescent peacock, and the hopelessly romantic hornbill are all proving there's a lot more to them than meets the eye. <laughs>